Pacific greetings, Talo Falava Kiora. The Folonga or the, the Voyage program is here to share more about uh, one of the, the great foundations in the history of uh, people's eyesight. We have our guest here in the studio, uh, the Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand, its CEO, Andrew Bell. He's here to talk more about the foundation and its mission and its vision for Pacific people. Welcome. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Well, I'm going to talk about the trade commissioner, 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 Ya le fiona ile ya funti ya tala no ma so so ni me fo il tau fa pula ino ni fa mo mo ya wala wala fa fonga ma la u sil sila pe yo ta tu no fa talo fa to ila u fiona funti ya le le mo ni tu la fia fia fa pe fo la u su ngai le la wa ma lo so fo ya wa tu fo ile fa talo fa ma le fa ma lo fo ila tu fa fa ta tu sai fo i ma le ni por kala me ma te ngo fia mo fa yo fo yo na ma wala ma no ta ta tal tal no el ni fia fia well, the Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand, sa bomla uta po inga, ola na fa mo mo le tu langa o fu fonga o tangata. Ya le la wa tau nu mai nei tu la e tala noina ni si ola tu fa mo mo inga. The Fred Hollows Foundation carries on the work of legendary New Zealander, the late Professor Fred Hollows. Fred was an internationally acclaimed eye surgeon and social justice activist who championed the right of all people to high quality and affordable eye care. The Fred Hollows Foundation hears Fred's vision of a world where no one is needlessly blind and works to end avoidable blindness in 30 developing countries across Asia, Africa and the Pacific. In the last five years alone, the foundation has performed nearly one million site restoring operations and treatments and trained more than 38,000 local eye health specialists. On the name of the Fred Hollows Foundation, Professor Fred Hollows, E mana tua le nei lifo mai mata ona ona nga lue puna wa e fa taua le aya te taua le tanga te soi fua mo se o nanga le nei mata ngo fie mo tanga te fa le tonu ya la tau ba ai o se fa la pa te tonga te tonu le fosso ani e ala te tonga mo ila tau mi faio na fa fo i a le o mai o le tau aso e nga lu lu e tonu e tonu se fulo le a tu asia afrika mal pasifika le lima te usanga te luai pe mal le lima milion te tonga u fa ti no le Fred Hollows Foundation. Fapele o ina o le tons fulu walua fi tangata nuu o i atu nuu i le soi fua malo lo ina o fu fonga o le tangata soi fua. Andrew, let's uh, before we talk about uh, your foundation, let's talk a bit about uh, a brief, uh, you know, discussion about your background. Uh, I understand you're a church minister. Why leave the ministry and become part of this great organization or this great foundation? That's a fantastic question, and thank you for your interest in my background. I certainly am. I was ordained uh, in the Methodist Church in Southern Africa. So all your Fijian listeners will be voting for me because I'm Methodist. But uh, when I came to New Zealand, I joined the Presbyterian Church. So hopefully all the congregational members out there of the different churches will, will uh, appreciate that. And uh, I have, was trained for mission work in my training uh, and development studies. And so working on the people who haven't got access to services, be they from the church or be they from uh, health care or education. That's the thing that's troubled me all my ministry. And so when I found the Fred Hollows Foundation, I found an organization that was seeking to bring eyesight to those who don't have it. And Fred's great words of needlessly blind, they don't need to be. Four out of five people who are blind mm -hmm. don't need to be. And uh, your listeners will all know that, uh, that Luke, uh, in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus gave his first sermon, uh, he gave some priorities for the church. And one of them is the recovery of sight for the blind. And uh, those words burnt deeply into my heart when I saw the opportunity for the Fred Hollis Foundation New Zealand and the tremendous work that they're doing across the great liquid continent of the Pacific. And so I saw a, a, a real coming together of my ministry, my training, my calling, and the work of the foundation. And I 
I heard the call to serve in the foundation. Foundation. I tell Tonu for Yale Sunga ya Andrew for Yale to Langa or Yasa five hour, well, they were. They name Tangata of his silly scene here on Nifa Labrupton. Sal Lavalo, Sal Nanga Fata or two Langa or Mele Yifa Penny, Tele Tele Sota Ing, a white pay or Lensal Noy, Andrew two Langa Nauli, or an Al Wang Al Tata Wuli, an Al Wang of Aula, Yale Tassila Banga Tawa, or the Fap Pulaino Tawas, Levo Yolo Manino, my Altus Paia, a Tawa Tele. Yel Tangata, a fair white lalang in the ye a one a po, a yamol on a soul, a wa a pem fay on a eye. Yam me voy na, ma faye foy on a faye, le tele on al wing a town of faye. A perfatus a two sail tangata lays on a soul, a pole and a eye. Pole and a eye. Andrew Fred Hollows was an ordinary boy who grew up to do extraordinary things. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Well, it's very interesting. Yes, he was the. The, the son of a railway worker from a very ordinary family. Uh, he was born in Dunedin. Then the railways took them to Palmerston North and he grew up there. Um, and he actually returned to Dunedin to go to theological college, to seminary. Um, but uh, I, I, the, the story goes that uh, he didn't fit in very well. He found it a bit conservative. And uh, at the end of his first year, he was invited to study medicine. And uh, he found in medicine a place to give expression to this deep social conscience that he had, which uh, his family say came out of the church, came from his father, from his, his uncles, uh, and the upbringing that he had had, that, that he needed to care for those who couldn't care for themselves. So he was driven by this belief. And when he returned from his training in London and uh, went to Australia and discovered the, the plight of the Aboriginal people in Australia, that is when he became the social activist and started to, to champion the cause of uh, giving eyesight to those who couldn't afford it. And that remains one of the great works that the foundation does is the service we provide is free of charge. And the reason why it can be free is because of the generosity of the New Zealand and Australian governments and also thousands of people who send us $15, $20 each month so that they can give someone back their sight because the cost of giving the site back is sometimes as little as $25. So uh, it's, it comes out of a deep uh, Christian heritage uh, that, the, the, that the foundation continues with its work today. Fred. <laughs> Out the Lord and Angan now, Lily in a note to fear, a little soon after Lena, Leonard with Fighting Al Wangalia. I will pay for an old fire to the ya ya and to tell a wallet your own idea. A lena to turn all the Algon of Afi. Yeah, I pay for Langal Wangalasa to why. Ella may for Lila in a form of Tangata. They allow war. Well, all of them to Tara Lowly, La Fulling Al Wangalia, Fred Hollows Foundation. A lena to lie in a new sealer, Australia, pay on a sound or I for him sound or soon I and Let's talk about the foundation itself, uh, Andrew. Mm. Walk us through the beginning of the foundation and what's its mission statement and so forth. So, unfortunately, Professor Fred Hollows contracted cancer and he died at the very young age of 64, really when he was in his prime. And uh, so in 1992 and 93, as he got cancer and as it became apparent that he wasn't going to survive the cancer, uh, his friends, his very close friends, and particularly his wife, Gabby, who is still one of our trustees and the patron of the foundation, they got together, it, the story goes literally around their kitchen table, and they said this, this dream cannot come to an end with Fred, this vision of a world where no one is needlessly blind. We've got to keep it going somehow. 
So they established the foundation in Australia, and nine months later they established the foundation in New Zealand. So two separate registered in each country with their own boards, but working together as sister organizations. And so when they decided, well, who was going to do what, the strong connection between the Pacific people and uh, New Zealand, it was decided that the New Zealand office would take responsibility for all the countries of the Pacific, Papua New Guinea and Timor-Leste, and that the Australian office would take responsibility for South Asia, Southeast Asia, and for Africa. And so the two boards sort of split up the world, if you like, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, gave us the challenge of not where the most people live, because obviously the populations in Asia and Africa are much bigger, but the most difficult when it comes in terms to access, because our people, the Pacific people, are spread out across tiny atolls, remote. way the most remote places. Uh, so not lots of people, but, but very great vast distances that are difficult uh, to cross. Often, as you know, not even an airstrip, you have to go by boat. Um, or they have to come by canoe uh, to see the surgeons. And so the great challenge that we have is, is not only the patients getting access to the service, but for our teams to be able to get to where the patients can get to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or Pacifica or the continent of Pito Isilion, Tele, Lolang, Ale, Tele, on a low, Tele, on a Levai, or Samilia, or the Vasalia, or Fafita Ulila, on a Ole, or Mamao, or to Motu, my Peo Ila Solmona, Mamao Tele, your Motu Lai, Mamao, Mamao, Ya or to Langalana, Tele Tami, a far winner, Ile, or to Tangata, my Motu, Motu, Motu Tele. In some or the Fred Holmes Foundation has so far trained 10 postgraduate eye care nurses, eight trained specialist eye health nurses, and two trained diabetes specialist nurses. Without an ophthalmologist, surgical eye visits to Samoa by the Pacific Eye Institute remain fundamental to the provision of eye services. These visits also support the eye nurses, three of which are running eye services themselves and act as first point of referral to patients from Tokelau. My name is Tango Ringa Dwenga of Soswani and Fred Hollows Foundation in Tuno Samoa. I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the first person to talk about the fact that I am the and let's talk about Samoa. What's the mission in Samoa? Walk us through that. In each Pacific Island country, and in Samoa is no different, we're looking to, to develop a sustainable eye care program. So one day we hope that we'll be able to say the Fred Hollis Foundation New Zealand no longer needs to visit. That's our goal. And so the Pacific Eye Institute was established in Suva in Fiji. And it's the only tertiary training institute for eye care workers in the whole of the Pacific. So it's a central place, much like uh, UPC or other um, organizations, uh, PTC you'll know in Suva as well. Um, they, you know, a place of central training for the whole of the Pacific. So an eye nurse is, think of a graduate nurse, a nurse who's already qualified, does a specialization for one year and becomes a specialist eye nurse. So it's like a midwife. If you think of a midwife as a specialist nurse, an eye nurse as a specialist nurse, and then they can also do, on top of that, the one year training, do another six month course, which gives them a certificate in diabetic eye care. So the nurses that have been trained at the Pacific Eye Institute are world class. World class. These are outstanding nurses. We're able to send them back to local clinics, maybe at the hospital in Apia and Savai, but also into the local clinics, right down to where the people can get to. Because, of course, these are blind people. These are people who can't see where they're going. And so we need to put the nurses as close to the people as possible. And there they're able to, to treat, they're able to do an eye examination. As good an eye examination as you'll get here at Specsavers or at OPSM, they are excellent at what they do. And they're able to, because they're nurses, they're able to prescribe medication, they're able to advise the patients. 70% of patients who are struggling with their sight, 
just need a pair of glasses, mm -hmm. a simple pair of spectacles. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. And the nurses can provide that. สาวฟ้าฟ้าดาดูดูนู่เอ็มมาว่าเอลังวันนี้ตุลังเลยเว้ยนี่ฟ้าลับตรงอ่ะเอ็มโมนี่ลังวันนี้บ้าใหญ่
Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand. When we come back, we'll continue our discussion around Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand. Welcome back to Fatal Fat Samuel Tabuinga. Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand is a true Pacific organization to be able to help our people. A visit to Samoa in 2013, there were 517 patients screened and 195 patients went through surgery for both Savoy and Upon. In the Tosanga Tene, Luafe Sultul, a Lua Malanga of Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand is Samoa. A Limas Low Sul Fitula to no one, most of Sosuani. I say Low Evers for Lima, the fight or tongue or lato, Fonga Mata, or the Totele, Maile Motu, or Polu Masavoi. Every eye is an eye, Andrew. This this is his favorite quote. Is it fair to say that restoring grassroots people's eyesight is paramount to your foundation? Restoring sight? Yes, indeed. That's, we, we're a singular-minded uh, organization. Restoring eyesight is what we do. Um, our work in diabetes eye care has come about because it's the greatest threat to eyesight with this looming uh, huge a challenge of diabetes that we don't even fully understand. And in the Pacific, five of the top ten countries in the world for the incidence of diabetes are in the Pacific. So it's a huge Pacific challenge. Uh, and, and, and so we are, we are we branching out, if you like, into the, di the challenge of diabetes, but around eye care. So eye care is what we do here. <laughs> Po wai ni se o Samo o te loina e le ngata i nuu malal fanga tonu le kalesia a o ni o wai nga e ma fai na longo longo yai longo longo puyali yai le ne ya van no taua mo la to fanga a o pe o le tel no ne a o ma fo fo la o isa fo o po lu o ma no no a po lima o nuu i tu o ta to wai nga mo se a van no la to te fanga i na ne fanga moe moe e le a mo a a ma se a fo fanga na i te ma mati na o alum fanga. Malover, <laughs> Andrew, if I have to talk to my auntie in Samo in Samoa tonight or tomorrow or this week about uh, Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand's arrival in Samoa, how much are they looking at in terms of paying this treatment for local people? The, the wonderful news is it's entirely free. So we rely on the generosity of New Zealanders to, to make donations to us as a foundation. So that when we go to any country in the Pacific, it's free. The patients just have to come. 
And this is the, the, the message we need your viewers to get out for us. If there's one thing they can do for us on this occasion is to phone the families uh, in, in Samoa and to get the message out. Because uh, we've been going for quite a few years, the figures you just, you've just given show that we've done surgeries in the past. There are other teams that visit as well. And so really the, the, the people that we're looking for, those ones that are way, way from the center, right on the edge, you know, hidden away in the villages. We need the message to get out. And of course, because they're blind, they need someone to lead them. They need someone to put them in the car or the taxi or even to walk or come by canoe, whatever means of transport they've got. So we need the families uh, to help us. Getting the doctors there, we've done that. Getting it for free, we've done that. The one thing we can't do, which we need the families to help us with, is to bring the patients uh, to the hospital. Lesson <laughs> Name <laughs> Fiji is the home of the Pacific Eye Institute, the first dedicated eye health training facility in the Pacific, providing internationally recognized postgraduate courses in eye care to nurses and doctors. The Pacific Eye Institute is an integral part of the solution by countering the chronic shortage of eye doctors and nurses throughout the Pacific region. Oleng Alwenga Soswani El Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand, Il Pacific Ola to Mitawai, Le Mana O Mio La Oino, Li Im Tamata Itoshi Mai, Ile To Mai Fabito Mofa Mai, Etula Mai Mata, Maleva Ail Tangata, Ufatuese Unangayala Ila Oonga, Pacific Eye Institute, It's Tono Fiti, Mol Pacifica, Ufamanu in Aya to Nuel Pacifica, Tangata Fing Alwenga, Well to Mai Le to Ainga Alwenga, or Lo Mana O Mia Tele. Let's talk about that uh, Fiji uh, uh, Eye Institute. Walk us through that. Very proud. Very proud. Uh, it is the, it's because in, in many things you need a hero. Hey? Mm. Whether it's in the life of the church or in the life of the local community, to start an institute like that you need a hero. The hero's name is Dr. John Situ, a Solomon Islander who has been way before his years, he's gone out, he's worked in Vanuatu, he's worked in the Solomon Islands, and then was invited to go to Suva to establish it. Again, through the generosity of the Australian and New Zealand governments, we were able to build a world-class facility in Brown Street in Suva. Fijian people will know where it is, just below uh, CWM Hospital. And uh, it is a world-class facility. It's been endorsed by the International Congress of Ophthalmology. This is not a cheap, you know, second rate. This is world-class. They are teaching the best techniques possible. And so when the patients turn up uh, to our clinics, they're very surprised often to see a Pacific Island doctor. They say, oh, we thought this was new from New Zealand. Where's, where's the New Zealand doctors? And we're so, so excited because that workforce that you were speaking of, of Pacific Islanders, uh, our, our lead ophthalmologist of the outreach team is Dr. Mundi Kualo, also from the Solomon Islands. Uh, currently in training in, at Pacific Island Institute is Dr. Lucilla Aicheng from Samoa. She's in her second year already. Uh, really training to go back to help your cousin, Dr. Mao, uh, back in Samoa. 
And so we're starting to see you know, the doctors coming through, because the doctors have to train for four years. It's a master's program. They have to be a qualified doctor. Four-year master's program, tough course. But they're coming out the other end now. We're starting to see the results of all the teaching and all their dedication, moving all the way to Samoa for, uh, to Suva for four years, but then going back home to their places. Yeah. <laughs> Le <laughs> Say how many so far, Andrew, how many nurses who are working for the foundation who are based in Samoa now? So I, I understand that it's 10 so far have graduated, but I just need to make it clear they don't work for us. So they go back to the Ministry of Health, back to the National Health Service, and they're employed by the government. They are Samoans or Tongans or from Vanuatu, um, and they're working back in their country, back in their, in their origin. So we don't actually employ uh, any staff in country uh, besides in Fiji and in Madang in Papua New Guinea and in Dili and Timor-Leste where we have got our training centers. Other than that, is, this is strengthening the health systems of the Pacific by the Pacific people uh, for Pacific people. So that's what the excitement is about the program. It seems that, uh, that you have managed to break through that relationship with the local people, the government, the ministries in terms of the transitioning of those uh, public servants to be able to do work on your behalf when you arrived in, in the island. Yep. So we work really hard at that. We believe that it's fundamental. Uh, and so a lot of uh, my work and members of my staff is to go along and, and to meet the, the local uh, hierarchy, to respect them, not to say, oh, we've come to do good work here, you must let us in, but way before we even get there, the work is happening so that uh, when we get there, we're welcomed, and we find that that's far better, a far better way of, of working. Ole Nalwanga Nina Amatamata Mayer, Fred Hollows Foundation. Olo Yela ya on a fire university, Olo Mafayona or Tawina Pava to some laws around Tawina Yaloma, Fana or Tato to Nu. Elegata now Samo, I wish you to Nu, or Pacific or Yai, my Etaua Lava Lalto, a foyer to Tato Tangata, Peona Sauno, a foul mofia, full thing on Nalwanga. Andrew, in New Zealand, 80% of Samoan villagers resided in New Zealand are church parishioners. 
Are you planning to speak to the church communities in the very near future around this opportunity for their families, relatives back home? Well, again, that's where we, uh, we need the help of, of the local people, your viewers, as to help us get the message out. There's just too many, so many Samoan churches around Auckland and around uh, uh, Wellington and all the way down to Dunedin. We'd never be able to spread ourselves. So uh, we would happily provide them with the information. If they can make contact with our office, they can find our, our website, hollows.org.nz, or give us a call, 0800-227-229. Uh, and, and we'd gladly send them all the information uh, that they need. So, so again, it's, it's the communities involved, the families' involvement um, that can really help us. Uh, because you might be able to see perfectly now. You might think, I don't need glasses. Oh, my eyes are perfect. But it's, it, eye disease can be, can be in your eye and you not know it because it takes years sometimes for it to progress. So we're not only wanting uh, people to go if, they, if they're struggling with their sight, but we're wanting people to come along and just have an eye exam make sure everything's all right. Because most of the patients in the Pacific discover that they've got diabetes because they have an eye exam. Because there's not blood tests, there's not access to easy to find for diagnosis for diabetes. Often it's because they have an eye test. And so for their whole health, it's really important that they have an eye test. And that's why we need the, the, the churches to be involved. Uh, in many places in the Pacific, sometimes because the people have to travel from so far, they have the operation one day, and then the doctors need to see them the next day that uh, the churches accommodate them and will cook up food for them and feed them and overnight they sleep in the, in the church hall and the next day the doctors can see them again. So really the churches are very important in our work. Yeah, <laughs> I lay law, but ye any any fafitauli, pony fama, if only a fine eye. I moti no art or tell on out that of matua, or lo of a muli my samo, or lo tell it too langa, or lo a fine eye in your matam too lang of a pair. Tonu la calesia, Tassila Wallen Fiona, Nam so swan you tatanga is a more more lato family. It I would tell it, young Alwingalia, that to a lot to a wild pair and I see the fear in New Zealand, ya, all in all a lot to lover and I pay a left wing sound all sooner and do too long a lea. Or to tell you to not to I have to I low a lava way more suka pal with if a suea yellow eye, so swell matter on a low eye lay way more in my suka. Ah, too long of me for pain, I tell a on that all long long puer for a mal or that to know. Andrew, one aspect required of working in Samo is knowing respect and gaining people's trust. Mm -hmm. How did you approach that task? Ah, uh, well, we. <laughs> I'm sure we've made many mistakes in our time. I think we've learned uh, as time has gone on. Um, and the great help has been uh, by having graduate nurses going back. So because we've got people who understand who we are, who can explain the work we do, because let's face it, if you've never heard of an eye doctor, if you've never had someone poke something in your eye, it can, you can be very fearful. And, and uh, eye care, cataract blindness, which is the main cause of, of, of blindness, uh, is, is brought on by age. So, you know, people in the Pacific will say, your hair goes gray, your eyes grow gray. Mm -hmm. And so it's elderly people often. So they're, they're fearful of these things that they don't understand. And so we require the, the local eye nurses. So there's, when there's no local eye nurse, when someone hasn't been trained from that region, we find that it's far more difficult than when the eye nurse, uh, and there's some lovely stories I could tell you if we had time of when the eye nurse goes back and is able to convince the people and the transformation that comes about when, when the first surgery happens and the people get their sight back, that eye nurse becomes a hero mm -hmm. because uh, just like Jesus, uh, you know, the blind now they see and they think, oh, this eye nurse, look at what this person's done. And when they're known to the people, when it's their brother, their sister, their cousin, oh, it's a fantastic thing to see. Andrew, thanks for coming. My in closing, pleasure. in closing, what would you like? What's the message to the Samoan, the f you know, the ever-growing Samoan community in Auckland about uh, Fred Hollow's foundation of New Zealand? The, the the big message that I'd like to give to the people uh, from Samoa now living in New Zealand is to get the message back that you can't neglect your eye care, 
It's as important as getting uh, your teeth checked, getting your ears checked, uh, if your, your heart checked, whatever your ailment is, eyes cannot be neglected. Uh, we're fortunate that we're blessed with two, but uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, misuse them. And so get your eyes checked. Please go down to the doctors. Please find where your eye nurse is uh, and, and go along and encourage the people back home in Samoa to access the eye services that exist. Uh, they're free. We want to see you. We'd love to see you. And our staff will work till, till late at night to make sure everybody's seen. So that would be a tremendous, tremendous help. Thank you so much. Fred Hollows Foundation. Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand, Malalato of Ringa Samoa. The Avano Samoa, Val Away Tato Ranga, a Polo Savoy, Manono Mapolima, Manu Tua, the Avano in Fiona, Afioane, Masaili appear, where I love it la to Umana out of Wina, Mofsilia, Fred Hollows Foundation of New Zealand, Ile Tu Langa, Mole Avano, Ayolato, Fonga, Molato Mata. Samoa, and we tell a lot of wing, I was a matto from Talanga, where it took a male ill, Nitu Lafiafi. And my two art to yate, when we tell you some more, so if we are of other willing to the Malif. In the Pacific, four out of five people who are blind don't need to be. Often, they can get their sight back with a simple operation for as little as $25. Sadly, even the small amount is out of reach for many. Kiwi eye Dr. Fred Hollows spent his life helping blind people see again. It's up to us. Donate $25 today to give someone their sight back. <laughs> 